Welcome to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we're gonna to talk about email deliverability and a question that I'm asked really often is how to best utilize the results from the email verification process. I'm Brad Owen. I'm happy to be here today with Discover Org to talk about email deliverability. So with that being said, let's hop in. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was just a really common thing that comes up to us, and that is, hey, I am sending out my campaigns and there's no issue. And the matter of the fact is, in most cases, there probably is, unless you are taking some sort of a proactive approach to email deliverability. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So to most people, the email inbox deliverability equation looks something like this. I sent out 1,000 emails, 10% of those bounced, so we'll say 100. And so what does that say to most people? Well, I have a 90% deliverability. And, and that would be rightfully, that, that would be the rightful way of thinking about it. Um, and in fact, I think that that's probably what's sort of ambiguous about email deliverability uh, and sort of the email marketing aspect of this. Um, because when we're looking at our email service providers, what are we seeing? We're seeing click-through rates, we're seeing open rates, but what we don't see is an inbox rate. And so in the general view of pretty much everybody that I speak to, uh, aside from people that are understanding of this, this sort of issue, um, they would assume that 90% of their emails are delivering. But based on a study that was done a few years ago, uh, and based on all the research that we continue to do internally, um, if over 10% of the emails you send bounce, less than 40% actually deliver to the inbox. And so this number right here, in terms of how many are bouncing, has a huge effect on your actually actual deliverability of the mail. And so let's look at that and, and let's recalculate this. And so if we take in the equation that I just mentioned, and, over, and if 10% of these emails are bouncing, instead of it being 90% deliverability, we're actually looking at 40% deliverability. And 40% deliverability, just because you bounce 10% of your emails, is pretty awful. So now we've talked about the problem, the email deliverability equation, and how that's oftentimes seen incorrectly. Let's talk about how to actually fix that issue using email verification and what exactly email verification is. So first of all, email verification is the process of going out to a remote server to identify whether or not the email is valid or invalid. In doing so, we are speaking directly to a remote server and trying to identify whether or not that email is good to send. So when we do that, there are oftentimes different response codes that we get back that we classify into different buckets. I'm gonna go over those now. So the best way to really understand these that we feel is to, look, is to look at it from the perspective of walking up to a home. So when we look at an email, there's the first part, that's the name of the individual. In this case, we'll say it's John. And then we're looking at the second part of the email, which is the domain name. And in that case, we're gonna say that that's the address on the street which the house is on. And so with that being said, we're gonna say, we're gonna to connect to this email server, which is just like walking up to the front door of a home, and we're gonna knock, we're gonna say, hey, is John home? And if, if John answers the door, we know 100% it's a valid address. So that one's covered. If we get to the front door and John is not there, um, so perhaps somebody else answers and says, John's not here, he doesn't live here anymore. We know that that's an invalid address. And the next one's pretty interesting. So these are our definitive result codes. Now we're gonna get into sort of the ambiguous side of things. And these are the, these are the pieces that I think uh, people are most often to not quite understand in terms of email verification and what to send to, uh, which is completely understanding um, because they're really quite confusing. Um, so what exactly is a catch-all? A catch-all is an email that always responds with a valid response. Now, it could be invalid, it could be valid, um, and, and it's oftentimes, it may be referred to as an accept all, um, but it's really an indeterminate email. Um, we can't get a specific result because the server always says that it's valid. And so with that being said, when we walk up to the front door, we say, hey, is John home? And <clears throat> they're gonna say, yeah, John's home. Can I talk to John? Well, John's not here right now. So we come back at a later time, hey, is John home? Uh, yeah, John's here. Can I talk to John? John's not home right now. So we, we continue to get this sort of false valid back from, from, from the remote email server, and in which case it always looks like a valid address. So when we're looking at a catch-all, this is probably the most interesting of all of the categories because oftentimes it's a really good email to send to, but we're unable to say with absolute certainty, which is why it doesn't fall under one of the top two buckets. If you're working with a really good data provider, like a Discover Org, um, 
those emails are almost always in like the 99 percentile in terms of being okay to send to. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna show an equation in just a little bit that actually outlines how to determine whether or not you can send to your account shells. Now, if we look at the last bucket of email servers, those are gonna be unknowns. Unknowns are really uh, an email that isn't responding at that time. So if we use the same concept of walking up to the front door, we knock, sometimes they answer, maybe they aren't talking to us, we've been ignored, whatever the case might be, um, you know, we cannot get an answer from that remote server. That could be due to full mailboxes, it could be due to misconfigured MX records or other sorts of things on the back end of, of, of a mail server. In, in either case, um, we're gonna come back at a later time and look at those emails, but you should never throw these emails out. Unknowns are important to keep because we just can't determine the validity at that time. And oftentimes those make up a really small percentage of your list. All right, so now let's talk about what exactly to send to from this criteria. I think we've already identified that valids are good to send to. We have identified that invalids are bad to send to. Uh, Catch-alls are the iffy area, and unknowns should not be sent to, but they shouldn't be thrown away. So let's, let's talk about those, and there's actually a fifth bucket. We don't normally talk about it because on our platform, we actually provide about 25 additional segments to this. Uh, including historical results such as identifying role addresses, free mail accounts, disposable addresses, all sorts of things that could be potentially um, bad for an email send uh, or good for some companies depending on what you're sending to and what your use case is. So if we look at catch-alls, I really want to paint the picture of what, an, uh, what, what sort of your results look like coming back from, from our system, or really any email cleaning system for that matter. Uh, now results are gonna differ uh, and accuracy differs very highly. But let's dive into this. So we're gonna base this on a thousand records. And based on, a, based on a thousand records, we're gonna say that based on this send, 480 valid emails came back. We're gonna say that 100 invalid emails came back. We're gonna say 400 catch-alls came back and 20 unknown emails. So we're gonna keep these 20 unknown emails. The catch-alls, we're gonna figure out what to do with. The invalids, we're gonna throw those out because we don't want those to bounce and cause bad deliverability. And the valids, we're gonna keep in. Valids are our gold. So in this case, let's break down the actual percentages for these, because uh, that's what's important to identify the catch-all metric. So this is gonna be 48% valids, uh, this is gonna be 10% invalid, this is gonna be 40% catch-all, and this is gonna be 2% unknown. So through a lot of our research and development and working with people, uh, they oftentimes ask us like, hey, we have this large segment of catch-alls. Sometimes it might be very small. They're usually B2B addresses. Catch-alls oftentimes are either business domains. Uh, they're very um, popular in the healthcare industry, um, uh, government, uh, any .edu's, so school, education, that kind of stuff. So um, if we say that catch-alls are at 40%, well, we don't wanna lose 40% of the emails going into our campaign. Um, and, and just because those are ambiguous doesn't necessarily mean we shouldn't send to them. So what we have found through a ton of research is that catch-alls will bounce at the same percentage rate in almost all use cases as your invalids. So we're saying that 10% of these 400 addresses will bounce when you send to them. That's really important to know because based on that, you can develop sort of just a small equation to say, how many of these can I send to to keep a bounce rate in, in a high deliverability zone. So as a good rule of thumb, most email service providers are going to um, not allow you to send out campaigns that have a six to 8% bounce rate. Uh, that being said, best use case is 3%. You really wanna keep your bounce rate below 3% in the sending process. Uh, we actually guarantee that no more than 3% of your list would bounce after using our service uh, or, or we'll refund the difference. Because I think that that's really the most critical part of the deliverability process is ensuring that it's below that percentage on an ongoing basis. So it's not necessarily gonna affect it on this just first send, but the first send could get you into pretty hot water in the long term. So looking at all these stats here, we oftentimes go back to the drawing board and work with really large organizations and small, medium-sized businesses to try to determine what exactly to send to. And this is oftentimes where it goes to. It goes to this equation because we're oftentimes trying to figure out what to do with catch-alls. In some cases, it's 5%. In other cases, it might be 90% of a list. Um, but in either of those two cases, we are going to look at the difference between the invalid percentage and the catch-all percentage. And we're also gonna look at the data source. If this is a really good data source that's been sent to recently, um, there's a really 
low propensity that there's going to be a high bounce rate. Uh, and the same with working with a really good data provider. Um, so those both kind of go hand in hand. In addition to that, one of the other things we look at is that to ensure the bounce rate is really low while still incorporating catch-alls, although we can't necessarily recommend you send to catch-alls, um, in most cases, it's very safe to do so, uh, based on some of the criteria I already spoke about. Um, so if you are in one of those sort of situations where you find that after doing this math and identifying what your bounce rate might be, after realizing that your 400 emails is gonna bounce at 10%, which is 40 emails, after realizing that and sort of looking at the math, you kind of have to ask yourself, am I still gonna be under 3%? Am I still gonna be under 4%? What is your level of comfort when it comes to sending and what your email service provider allows? And based on that, we would consider adding more valids to that mix to sort of suppress the overall number to ensure a really high deliverability rate and a really low bounce rate. So as a recap for today, I wanna to talk first about inbox deliverability equation, how it is highly deceptive. If you're bouncing 10% of your emails, you are not delivering 90%. In fact, it is much lower and it is probably detrimental to your overall email campaign. Fix that problem and your open rates will go up, which is the metric you can see. On the other side of this, we, the email verification side, what is it that you can actually send to? Valids, keep them, invalids, delete them, catch-alls, do the math we talked about, and unknowns, keep them for a later time because they still might be good. Based on all those things, if you have any other questions, I'm Brad from Never Bounce. You can reach out at any time. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon for more Whiteboard Wednesdays. Like, subscribe, and comment below.